everyone and after a long time we are back with justice v ram kumar who is very popular not only on our sessions but also on the live blog today's session would be previous conviction how and when to frame charge this topic looks short but i know that after once you hear justice ram kumar all the doubts would be cleared because he has the knowledge to go deep dive we have been reading his articles also on the live blog and we are all eagerly waiting for his book without taking much time i would request sir to start sharing his knowledge thank you sir for acknowledging our invite and we are grateful as ever thank you mr vikas good evening friends this is my re emergence indeed after a pretty long spell of silence some health issues continue to trouble me from frequently addressing you but i do not wish to and i refuse to wither away completely from the legal fraternity so here i am before you with a topic which has been generating some doubt and uncertainty in certain judges and lawyers alike the topic is how and when to frame a charge I'm sorry for previous conviction there is still a lingering confusion in the minds of some judges public prosecutors and other members of the legal fraternity as to the modalities of framing a charge for previous conviction see all, all of you know that the cha chapter in the crpc 1973 dealing with the framing of charge by a court is chapter 17 starting with section 211 and ending with section 224 section 211 to 217 deal with the form of charges and sections 218 to 224 deal with the joinder of charges now section 211 and 212 are the most important sections now section 211 uh, gives you the contents of a charge what, what all things should a charge court charge should contain and section 212 Uh, gives the particulars of the time, place, person, etc. in a charge. Now, the the particular provision dealing with previous conviction is subsection seven of section two hundred and eleven. This subsection reads as follows: If the accused, having been previously convicted of any offence, is liable by reason of such previous conviction to enhance the punishment or to a punishment of a different kind for a subsequent offence and it is intended to prove such previous conviction for the purpose of effecting the punishment which the court may think fit to award for the subsequent offence the fact date and place of the previous conviction shall be stated in the charge and if such statement has been omitted the court may add it at any time before sentence is passed this is subsection 7 of section 211 now some of the doubts which are expressed are see the court is going to frame charge regarding previous conviction now he is presently the court is framing charge for an offence which he is alleged to have committed and he is about to to be um, prosecuted and the trial is yet to start and charge is which to be framed while framing charge the question is whether a charge for the previous conviction against him can also be clubbed along with the main charge to be framed now the so you the usual doubts which are expressed are will will not the prejudice will supposing the charge for previous conviction is to be pre framed along with the main charge to be framed for the main offense to be to be uh, prosecuted to be tri tried will it not prejudice the mind of the court because the court court may get uh, the mind of the court may get prejudiced because there is a previous conviction so take you standing in the dock oh you have a previous conviction to his discredit to your discredit so you may be a habitual offender that may be the impression which the judge may have number 2 will it not give rise to an apprehension in the mind of the accused also that he is sure to be found guilty uh, of the main offense which he is about to face trial 
he is about to face trial for the main offense so will it not raise an apprehension in the mind of the accused that i definitely found guilty because previous conviction is already there in the charge and it has been read over to me so the judge is aware prosecutor is aware uh, my lawyer is also aware therefore court may think that i am a habitual offender so he may have engender a, a fear that he is definitely he will definitely be found guilty for his offense also third apprehension or fear expressed are is will not the public prosecutor take advantage of the previous conviction so as to influence the mind of the judge to the detriment of the public prosecutor is aware of the previous conviction will he not take an advantage of the previous conviction to the detriment of the accused with a view to influence the mind of the judge these are the usual apprehensions or fears expressed by judges and lawyers well these are all misplaced apprehensions in the minds of the legal person age no judge well trained in law should be vulnerable to play to fall prey to the mere allegations in the prosecution story after all prosecution case is only allegation we are yet to the accused is yet to face the trial during which prosecution will have to adduce evidence in support of the allegation is only evidence is and to go find that it is legal evidence which can be admitted in uh, in the case then and then only the, the question of proving the charge or proving the allegations in the charge will arise and indictment is not worth the name unless substantiated by legal evidence hence there is nothing wrong in the judge or the magistrate framing a charge for previous conviction along with the charge for the main offense that is one rider charge charge previous conviction of course you can club along with the main charge if charge for previous framed along the main charge in fact it can be included in the main charge there is one rider and the accused is found guilty of the main offense which is about which is about to be tried the charge for previous conviction should not be read out to the accused nor shall the plea of the accused be taken and the prosecution shall not adduce evidence also in support of the previous conviction these are the three um, prohibitions even though a charge for previous conviction can be included in the charge for the main offense don't the court court cannot read out the charge to the accused for previous conviction court cannot also read out to the charge to the accused and take his plea regarding the previous conviction then court cannot let allow the prosecution to adduce evidence in support of the previous conviction all this can be done only after only in case the accused is convicted of the main offense which he is going to be tried these are the uh, the uh, riders uh, now let us examine the procedure contained in the crpd uh, section 211 clause 7 only says charge can be for previous conviction also it only says so it does not contain any of the riders any of the do's and don'ts the charge under section 2117 for crpc for previous conviction can therefore be clubbed along with the charge for the main offense proposed to be tried thereby making a composite charge that is in fact if you kindly see form model form number 32 in the crpc second schedule there are model forms form number 32 is the appropriate form for charge that a what all thing the charge should contain it is framed in in compliance of sections 211 and 212 of chapter 17 of crpc now the in in that part 3 of form number 32 contains the charge for previous conviction in fact in that model form there is a accused is charged for the offense of theft punishable under section 379 ipc and he is also charged for the previous conviction of an offence against property contained in chapter 17 of the indian penal code therefore the charge for the main offence is the charge for previous conviction also then where does where do you find the restriction 
but after so clubbing the charge for previous conviction along with the charge for the main offense the three restrictions are contained in section 2483 in the case of a magistrate conducting a trial of a warrant case and section 236 in the case of a session judge con consist uh, con trying a uh, a warrant trial uh, under the crps now the the section 2483 and its proviso you see that the first condition is the charge for the previous conviction shall not be read over to the accused condition the same condition you will find in section 236 proviso with regard to sessions of its session trial this is initial trial some uh, warrant trial by a minor 2483 and its proviso second condition is the charge shall not be like shall not be asked to such charge charge shall not be read over to the accused the accused shall not be asked to plead to the charge third the previous conviction shall not be referred to by the prosecution or in evidence any evidence adduced by the prosecution the previous conviction shall not be referred to by the prosecution in any evidence nor shall the prosecution adduce evidence for pre, uh, regarding previous conviction unless and until the accused is convicted in main offense so un, unless the accused is convicted a conviction has been recorded in the main offense for which he is being tried the fact previous conviction should not come on record though it can be clubbed in the main charge prepared by the court but it shall not be read out to the accused nor shall his plea taken nor shall the prosecution be allowed to adduce evidence all these restrictions are contained in section 248 clause 3 and in the proviso with regard to a magistrate conducting a warrant trial and and section 236 and its proviso in respect to of a session conducting a session trial under the now let us examine the provision in the old code 1998 code 1973 code was preceded by the code 1998 under the corresponding provisions of the code of criminal procedure 1898 there was some difference in the procedure of a magistrate trying a warrant case and a court of session trying a warrant case in the case of a magistrate trying a warrant case under the 1898 code the magistrate could not club could not only club the magistrate had larger powers than the session court magistrate could not only club the charge for previous conviction in the main charge for the main offense the magistrate could also read out the charge to the accused and take the plea of the accused in in uh, the only restriction on the magistrate under the 1898 code was contained in section 255 capital a uh, that, that is against taking evidence the magistrate was precluded from accept, allowing the prosecution from adducing evidence in support of the previous conviction all other things the magistrate could do namely he could read the charge for previous conviction he could uh, take the plea of the accused etc but only restriction was he could not allow the prosecution to let in evidence for previous conviction unless and until the accused was convicted in the main main offense uh, that was but but in the case of a court of session under the 1898 code the position was as obtained in the 1973 code the court session court of session could uh, club the charge for previous conviction in the main charge but court of session could not read out the charge for previous conviction to the accused and could not uh, take his plea also unless and until the accused was found guilty in the main offense that that restriction in the uh, it, it, it was there in the uh, 1898 code also in fact section 310 of the 1898 code uh, specified that it is it is identical to section 236 of the 1973 code and its proviso a uniform procedure now after the under the 1973 code 
a uniform procedure has been made applicable both in the case of a magistrate as well as in the court of a in the case of a court of session both are having similar powers they can include the charge for previous conviction in the main charge but the, it, it shall not be read out to the accused it, the plea of the accused shall not be taken evidence in support of the plea also shall not be allowed to be taken unless and until the accused is found guilty of the main offense which he is about to which is being tried now coming to the case law i am aware of only two decisions of the kerala high court one by a learned single judge and another by a division bench now in the in the case of learned single judge haji k k moidu versus food inspector kolikod municipality 1961 klt 415 the author of the judgment is justice t c raghavan it was held by the learned judge that a charge for previous conviction should have been framed by the magistrate only after the accused was found guilty of the main offense it was actually it, it is technically not correct because under the as i mentioned under the old code this is a decision rendered under the 1898 code where under the magistrate had larger powers than that of the session court magistrate can could uh, club the charge for additional conviction for previous conviction magistrate could uh, read out the charge for previous conviction the magistrate could take the plea of the accused also if, uh, in the for the previous conviction even before convicting the accused for the main offense that such power was given to the magistrate but the learned judge took the view that magistrate should not have framed the charge unless and until he convicted the accused for the main offense the above view was technically not correct since under the 1898 code a composite charge both for the main offense as well as for the previous conviction could have been framed and the plea of the accused also could have been taken and uh, the only bar was against uh, allowing the prosecution to adduce evidence in support of the previous conviction unless and until the accused was found guilty of the in the main offense now the above view that even the charge for previous conviction should have been framed by the magistrate only after the accused was convicted was therefore disapproved by a division bench of the kerala high court in food inspector chitu versus mariyappan chettiyar 1965 klt 963 the judges are justice anna chandi and justice p govind menon this is p govind menon was subsequently elevated to the supreme court which which also uh, which was also rendered under the 1898 code the division bench held that while in a warrant case tried by a court of session even the plea of the accused on the charge for previous conviction could be taken only after the accused was found guilty of the main offense such a bar was not applicable to a magistrate trying a warrant case under the <coughs> 1898 code the division bench accordingly ruled that the composite charge framed by the magistrate and the plea of the accused taken on such charge was perfectly legal now under the 1973 code the procedure has been made uniform both for the magistrate as well as for the session judge they they can include the charge for previous conviction in the uh, main charge for the offense to be tried which offer the main offense but the charge the charge for previous conviction shall not be read out to the accused unless and until he is convicted of the main offense likewise the plea of the accused on the previous conviction also shall not be taken unless and until he is found guilty in the main offense again uh, the, the prosecution shall not be allowed to let in evidence in support of the previous conviction unless and until the accused has been convicted of the main offense this is the procedure now in vogue under the crpc 1973 so kindly you uh, judges and lawyers and all uh, members of the legal fraternity should bear this in mind while uh, the court is to frame charge for previous conviction and how the previous conviction is to be brought on record and how the accused is to be finally found guilty and convicted and sentenced for the previous conviction thank you thank you sir for sh- sharing your knowledge and i am quite sure that everyone who watches this video maybe it is the judiciary 
maybe it is the lawyer or maybe it's a student yeah. of law also like you always speak that we are all student of law so exactly. this journey uh, your knowledge sharing would help them to embark better with better insights thank you sir and we all wish that you should remain healthy and you should keep on sharing your knowledge thank you namaskar like this please thank you